If you're on or considering America's self-proclaimed best network and you want the best Windows phone to match, your choices are limited to two. The Lumia Icon from the artist formerly known as Nokia and the new HTC One M8 for Windows, which we reviewed earlier this week. So, which of these Microsoft flagships is cool enough for your me tile? I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and the only way I know of to answer that question is to compare them. So let's do that. Join us for HTC One M8 for Windows versus Nokia Lumia Icon. If it's a lightweight Windows phone you're after, you might want to look elsewhere. The small phones, these are not. But their size manifests in different ways. On the Lumia, the sheer aluminum band bordering the phone makes you feel every bit of its 9.7 millimeter thickness, and the square corners and matte polycarbonate back give it a sturdy, almost brick-like feel. It's only 7 grams more massive than the HTC product, but it feels much heavier in the pocket, and those sharp corners do dig into the palm, which isn't very comfortable. The HTC phone is thinner and much rounder, making it more comfortable to hold and easier to put into a pocket. Its chamfered edges and brushed aluminum casing give it a flashier look, and its twin front-firing speakers make it a bit taller, too. There are no capacitive keys beneath the display on the M8, nor a hardware camera button, both of which are present on the Icon. But there is an IR port, and more importantly, a micro SD slot on the HTC device, while the Nokia goes without. In exchange, for you fellow futurists out there, the Icon sports Qi wireless charging support while the One M8 does not. Let's talk about displays for a second. Both are 5-inch 1080p screens with a pixel density of 441 pixels every inch, but with different technology behind each, you get very different results from each. Most notably, the Icon screen is capable of almost perfect blacks relative to the One M8's more gray-blue reproduction, and colors on the Icon also pop with much higher contrast and saturation, making the tiles of the modern UI really stand out. We've often said AMOLED screens are the better fit for Windows phones for just this reason, and it certainly holds true here. The Icon's screen can also get much brighter, but in broad daylight, neither is going to be your best friend. Gloved usage is possible on both, but slightly easier on the Icon, thanks to super sensitive touch. Annoyingly, though, the icon doesn't support double tap to wake, so you have to press a button to unlock it. Finally, let's take a quick look under the hood. The processors here aren't that far apart in either branding or clock speed. And theoretically, the slightly newer hardware in the M8 should translate to faster app and page loads and better 3D gaming performance, but it's tough to see that in the real world here. Sometimes the icon beats the M8, and sometimes the opposite is true. There's nothing really significant or consistent about these differences. And we're already talking software, so let's make it official with a screen swipe. There's a version difference in Windows Phone here that makes this comparison troublesome. Our Lumia icon on 8.1 is still waiting for the most recent version of the OS, while our M8 came out of the box with the update already installed as Windows Phone 8.1.1. The main differences are minor and include native folder creation, VPN support, Cortana updates, and a few others. But since all this will eventually come to the icon as well, we'll leave those be for now. Custom software is a whole other folder, though. Nokia used to be the leader here, with many exclusive titles in the Windows Store that you could only get if you owned a Lumia. Now, some of that still holds true, with the camera and media titles. But some big ones, like the Here Navigation Suite, are now available for all Windows phones. And with the new M8, HTC brought over its own camera apps from Android, along with the useful Blink Feed news and social ribbon. You still get more fine-grained control over some features on the icon, like the screen's color profile, but on balance, the software differences between Lumia Windows phones and others are getting more minor by the month. Yet the Lumia line can afford to sacrifice some software specialties because it still packs the best damn cameras you can find on any Windows phone. No, any smartphone, period. On the Icon, it's a 20 megapixel optically stabilized sensor made into a Carl Zeiss lens and operated by the Nokia Camera, the most advanced and versatile viewfinder on the market. Meanwhile, the 1M8 goes a completely different direction. 
bringing a 4 megapixel sensor working in concert with a dedicated depth sensor and HTC's own camera app to offer a more consumer focused viewfinder. Maybe the simplest way to boil down the differences here is to say that the icon is for people who want the closest thing to a professional camera on their smartphone, while the 1M8 is for folks who value fun more than raw power. Despite their big resolution gap, each of these is perfectly capable of quick, informal shots, and each one also does a fantastic job in low light. Nokia's PureView technology edges out HTC's ultra pixel method here, bringing more authentic colors and less noise to dark photos, but they're both miles ahead of most of the competition when the lights go down. HTC's Duo camera offers a depth of field effect that apes a high-end camera, but that's easily replicated with a third-party app on the Nokia. The principal advantage the Lumia enjoys is resolution. Normally, the software uses pixel oversampling to whip up an image not much bigger than HTC's, but having access to the raw 16 megapixel picture on the icon means you get a lot more detail when zooming in on distant objects. Now, surprisingly, on the front side, the situation is reversed. The 1M8's 5 megapixel front facing camera is a much higher resolution than the 1.2 megapixel selfie cam on the Lumia. Back on the primary optics, when you take into account the lens expansions on the Lumia, its 4 microphone audio array, and the smoother video made possible by optical stabilization, maybe the results aren't surprising. Both smartphones are more than fine for casual shooting, but the icon was built in large part around its camera, and it's the more capable shooter overall. In much the same way, the M8 was built around its big boom sound drivers. And while the Nokia speaker is pretty loud, it's located all the way around back, and it just can't hold a candle to the 1M8 setup. On headphones, both devices can get plenty loud, but the Icon's Dolby enhancement is a little richer to our ears and less grating at high volumes. The Icon also does slightly better with FM reception, though reception on other radios is comparable. And for phone calls, we actually prefer the brighter, crisper sound of the 1M8's earpiece to the mushier Icon sound. Each has excellent noise suppression, though. What about gaming and other high-demand tasks? Well, the differences begin to taper off here. Whether we're running heavy horsepower titles or less strenuous diversions like Sparkle 2 here, each Windows phone can probably handle whatever you can find in the Windows Store. The 1M8's aluminum casing will get hotter to the touch over time, but that's about the only difference we saw. And guess what? The minor difference in battery capacity is also not enough to make for any real endurance advantage on either side. Keep in mind that both batteries are embedded and non-replaceable though, so unless you're aggressively policing your app activity, be aware that you might have to hit up the battery saver toward the end of a heavy day. Let's be straight, this is a tough choice. They're both class-leading, well-made devices, and each has compelling features the other doesn't. So much of this comes down to personal preference. Which of those features you value more, and which aesthetic you like better? The biggest difference is the camera. HTC brings more fun to the table, but the icon wins by a landslide when it comes to raw capability. And when you consider that the Lumia is free on contract right now with Verizon, and $100 cheaper than the one I made at full retail, we think the Nokia phone offers the better value at the moment. But we'd be lying if we said the M8's more sophisticated build and acoustic dominance wouldn't have us thinking twice at the cash wrap. The end of the day, the choice is yours. So let us know which one you'd pick down in the comments and hit the like button while you're down there if you did enjoy this video. For more insight, check out our full review of each of these phones here on YouTube and at pocketnow.com. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, reminding you to keep your pixels ultra and your view pure. See you next time.